This is Larry Adam from Snake and the ACDC show Akadaka, and you're listening to the Australian Rock Show. Hey, 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 it's Dennis Gray, and it is show number 70 of the Australian Rock Show. Thank you for taking time out to listen in. Very much appreciate it. Got a pretty cool show lined up, which I know many of you, especially those who dig ACDC and Aussie hard rock in particular, are going to enjoy. For over four decades, Larry Attard has been a mainstay on the Australian hard rock scene. Firstly, with his outfit Snake, then later with the internationally acclaimed ACDC tribute show, Akadaka. He sounds a lot like Bon, he sounds a lot like Brian, yet Larry though first came to our attention in the early 1980s as frontman for Sydney Outfit Snake, one of the most underrated Aussie hard rock bands from that time period. Snake's history, as you'll learn from this interview, in fact dates back to 1974. We often get asked who the band are cranking out the intro music for this podcast. Folks, that opening theme music for the Australian Rock Show is indeed a snake tune, the anthemic Let the Music Begin, which was cut back in 1986. Anyway, we spoke to Larry this past week and had a good chat covering many things, such as the time he and Snake were called into the Albert Studios around the time when they were looking to fill Bond's shoes. His love of ACDC. Oz Rock in general, and much, much more. Yet before we rip into the interview, why don't we get in the mood with a song? Turn it up loud right here and right now, because this is Akadaka and their blazing take of ACDC's Kicked in the Teeth. Today we're talking to Larry Attard, frontman for the internationally successful ACDC tribute show known as Akadaka, a gig that he has had since 2000. Larry, welcome to the Australian Rock Show. Thanks very much, Dennis. Mate, anyone who has seen Akadaka will attest to the authenticity of the show and is, as is commonly known, with cannon, bagpipes and a full-on show, 25,000 watts of sound, huge light show and using the same instruments as ACDC themselves, Akadaka is as close to ACDC as you can get. The appetite for the music of ACDC is insatiable. Why do you think that is? I just think it's good, good Aussie rock, which is, you know, it's, it's ageless. I suppose, um, and uh, yeah, it's sort of you know, just everyone needs a, a bit of an outlet every now and then, and and, and I think ACDC just sort of um, brings it to the table. Agreed, agreed. So what what can you uh, what can yeah. you tell us about Akadaka? Your son Jesse is Angus, is that correct? Jesse is Angus. Yeah. Oh, we've been going since two thousand. I think he was three year old when we very first started, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Jesse actually started off on drums with us played drums for a while when he was about 14 and then decided he wanted to uh, move on to the Angus spot and uh, yeah he's spot on with it so um, yeah it's just yeah it's been amazing me actually um, uh, over the years how he's he's progressed and they're an awesome little guitarist. Having seen the band I can attest that you guys are bloody loud. Belting out uh, vocals ah, yeah. belting out vocals a la Bon and Brian must take a toll on your voice. Do you do anything to look after your voice? Uh, drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Uh, yeah, I think it's the voice of a thousand hangovers, someone <laughs> telling me. So Akadaka has been your gig since 2000, but I want to go back a little bit further than that, mate. Let's talk about Snake. Sure. Uh, let's talk about Snake and maybe a little bit before that. So did you grow up in Sydney? Yes, I did. Okay, so how did you get yeah, into rock and uh, roll? Sydney. Uh, oh, God, I think when I was 10 year old, I wanted a guitar. And um, I was a bass player. I still am a bass player. Um, and was desperately trying to put a, a band together, you know, 13, 14-year-old. I think my first band was called Liquid Amber. <laughs> it seems to be par for the course, really. <laughs> but, uh, I think I was about 11-year-old then. And um, and then after that, um, I met a few other boys and we, we put a three-piece together. Um, and uh, we ended up calling it Snake, hmm. and that went from about 1974 to about 86, 87, I think. Yeah. Okay, so only um, only one band before Snake, which was uh, Liquid Amber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as you uh, as you may be aware, the um, the intro music which we use for the Australian Rock Show podcast is "Let the Music Begin." Can you, I didn't know that. You no. didn't know that. Well, 
it's symbolic because my brother and I started in community radio in Sydney around about the time that album was released and we we had the album. I, okay. I, guess, I guess more than anything, I'd like to know more about the background of that song, Let the Music Begin. Well, what it was was um, it, it ran about, oh, I think it was about 1982, 83. We had a big um, change in Snake, I, I, I suppose you'd call it. I, I got... Um, Kim Wheeler in from the Jeff and John band. Uh, we pissed off our management, who was doing no good for us at the time, and um, um, a new drummer, and just decided to um, to start all over again type thing. So I, I wrote that song to for that very reason, mm. to say, yeah, we're starting again, you know, type thing, and uh, and and here it is, you know. So, Snake, from, um, let's just say, 74 to 79, you're treading the boards around all the, the, the pubs around Sydney. Uh, you must have some great memories of that time period. Oh, we were working five nights a week. Um, yeah, I have some awesome memories. I mean, God, you know, we, we owned, at one stage there, the biggest production in Australia. And, you know, we, we had a 10-ton high-no truck. Uh, the thing that people didn't realise was we were our own crew. Mm. <laughs> so we used to get there at like, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning, load the, all these bloody huge things in and, and there was no work safe, no work and safety Not back thing in those days. You, you carried it all upstairs, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'd set up, we'd, uh, we'd play and then we'd uh, pack down and we'd get out of there at 5 o'clock in the morning. So that was it, five nights a week. And it was, um, but it was a, uh, the most funnest days I've ever had in my life. You know, I mean, we, I meant to, to one day put on Facebook what bands that we actually supported because of our production. Um, you know, I can't say it's our talent. It must have been our production because we used to have to use it. But, um, you know, there's Motorhead is one of them and bloody, you know, uh, Dio and ACDC and, um, uh, yeah, we supported a lot. You know, it was uh, amazing, an amazing time. Yeah. So, are you are you also playing school dances, high schools back back then in that time period? It's sort of just around that time. It sort of uh, hopped out of the uh, school dances. I think the last school dance we did was uh, or I think it was a civic centre. Mm. Uh, we supported ACDC um, in nineteen seventy five. Um, at the Castle Hill, I thought it used to be called the Harvey Lowe Pavilion. Um, we did, we supported them there and we supported them at Forestville Community Centre. And that was both sort of like underage gigs. And then it sort of moved to more pub gigs after that. And we used to do Frenches in um, uh, Oxford Street and uh, yeah, all that type of thing. Was the first time you saw ACDC w- when you supported them? Yes, it was, yeah. That was the Castle Hill Harvey Loper V, yeah. Okay, good memories. 75, of, uh, yeah. Good memories I'll of never that forget evening. that. <laughs> yeah, oh, very good memories, yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, I didn't say much to the boys because I was, I was reasonably young at the time and um, quite honestly, they scared me a little, you know. That uh, you know, I, I remember saying hello to Bond, and um, and he was uh, he was a very nice uh, gentleman, and um, yeah, it was yeah, it was great times actually. The right stuff, W R I G H T, is your other outfit that opens up for Akadaka. So Australian rock and roll of the Easy Beats, Stevie Wright, etc. Was that your main? Were they your main influences? Uh, I, you know, yes and no. Um, you know, I mean, there's a part of me that loves all that that type of music but um then again you know like i grew up with the beatles and um uh alice cooper and edgar winter and you know i mean uh, deep purple and just the the only one that sort of is probably above my head i'm probably too stupid to um to understand is led zeppelin <laughs> <laughs> so the um I, I just can't quite get my head around it you know? So the, the, those Vander and Young guitar-based bands obviously had uh, a massive impact on your life, though. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yes. So Definitely. what about, um, you must have some great memories of Stevie Wright. 
Stevie Wright, actually, we supported Stevie Wright at, um, it's a Bankstown pub. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it'll come to me, but um, three uh, swallows? when he was, was doing... Three Swallows? Was it the Three Swallows? Uh, that was the Three Swallows. That's my exactly. memory. Exactly, yeah. Well done. Thank you. Something Train, his, the name of his band was. Stevie Wright, and, and they were awesome. Yeah, just, he was just awesome. Yeah, he was great. That's so, a shame he went the way he did. Larry, why is Australian rock and roll the best in the world? I think because we all come from that convict blood. <laughs> <laughs> And it's sort of, we're from the school of hard knocks, most of us. And um, and it just, um, I think it just relates in our music, you know. It's uh, it's our hereditary, I think, you know. Yeah. Well, I have clear memories of Snake in the mid-80s. In 1986, I used to play the Let the Music Begin album to death. Now, Let the Music Begin came out on Possum Records, who also released that Tough Luxury album from memory. Was there other label interest in the band? Um, no, there was no interest in the band. <laughs> just from Possum? <laughs> That's just from Possum, and we had to make them do that, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, in those days, um, it wasn't easy for a, for a rock band to, um, to do anything in this country. Um, you know... I mean, everyone was trying glam rock, and it's it's sort of got a few bands across the across the post. But um, all in all, I think A uh, and R people were um, looking for, and record companies were were just taking what overseas gave them, and and not um, and not even being interested in what we do. I mean, a a, a uh, incredible fact that just comes to me now was. I submitted my um, music to um, Polygram Australia. This is years ago, uh, Snake. Mm. And the guy rang, uh, I rang the guy about it after I sent it to him and he went, uh, and I can't remember his name, but I wish I could because I'll tell you. Um, but he went, Larry, Larry, Larry. He went, no, we get these things every day. He said, you know what? He said, I might have come across your... Uh, your tape, but, uh, you know, I mean, if the spelling wasn't right on the envelope or if it was written in crayon, I'd just throw it in the bin. And I went, oh, really? Uh, you know, so, you know, if you don't like the look of the way someone's handwritten on your envelope, you know, uh, you do that. And he went, yeah. Went, All right, okay. So I thought, stuff you. I'll um, send a polygram in, um, in London. So I sent my tape a polygram in London and um, the guy from London actually called me at about two o'clock in the morning mm. and said, Hey Larry, thanks very much for sending your, your, your tape. I really like it. He said, but the, the thing is, he said, we, we've got a bit of a protocol and you have to go through our Australian branch. And I went, well, I did that. And I told him exactly what the guy said and he was absolutely furious. Mm. And the next day, the guy rang me and begged me to come into his office. Oh, please, please, you know, yeah. come in, I'll listen to your tape, you know. And I went, no, nah, stuff to you. I went, no, nah, I won't do it. I probably should have. Probably would have got a deal, <laughs> but I didn't. But that was the general sort of consensus of A&R people in the 80s. I don't know what it's like now. I don't care, really. Mm. I mean, the internet stuffed all record companies, but that was their... That was their thing in the 80s, you know. That, that um, I always had a, a saying that the, the music industry was run by assholes, and um, I'll still I'll stick with that. Yeah, Mate, and it didn't uh, matter in them days that Snake was bringing in, you know, I, uh, you know, two thousand, three thousand people to um, to Blackstone RSL, you sure. know, on a, a paid, you know, um, payers. It didn't matter. <laughs> well, good uh, that good was music. Just beyond me, good music always finds an, uh, its audience. Let's take a listen to Snake. This yeah. is the Black Eyed Bruiser Seven Inch, which originally came out on Possum Records. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, but after Bon Scott passed away, Angus and Malcolm turned up at a Snake gig in Sydney, and you were called into Albert Studios to meet with George Young and Harry Vander and do an audition for them. Yes, uh, I did an audition for them. Uh, they, uh, we actually sent a. Um, it's a funny story. Well, it's not really a funny story, but um, uh, Philip 
the brother of our rhythm guitarist at the time, I was drinking in the pub and ran into Harry Vander and George Young mm. and was sitting, sitting down drinking with them. And he said, um, I just got sent this tape from my um, brother because we just recorded a demo. Um, and he said, uh, you guys should probably have a listen to this. And um, so they took it. And next thing you know, they rang us and um, and called us into the studio, the whole band. So we thought we were getting... Um, we thought we were getting signed mm. by Albert. In the end, it was sort of like George Young talking to me and saying, you know, what do you think about traveling overseas? And, uh, you know, I was a little young and stupid, and I was saying, oh, I suppose I have to ask me mum, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just silly things like that. And um, I, I never thought a whole lot of it, but... Um, uh, yeah, they wanted to hear more of um, of what I wrote, and they wanted to me to send lyrics and stuff like that in, which I did. Um, but yeah, uh, and then about a week or two after that, Malcolm and Angus were at um, Snake Gear, Karen Bar Inn, mm. uh, watching a band, and um, I never got to talk to them, but um, I wish I would have. But yeah. Uh, so they were, they were, they were, they were sniffing yeah. around. Then clearly, you were. Uh, I think you know, so. In their I think they were sniffing around. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's all hearsay and all that sort of stuff. But you know, if you if you sort of read between the lines, it's pretty much what was what they were looking at. You know, mm. and and um, and yeah, I think uh, I think my major upset was I'm a lot younger than them. Oh, well, not a lot, but you know, I was five years younger than than Angus so you know um, uh, Angus was the youngest member of the band and I was probably a little too young to do it you know? that again you know I mean listen to Brian he's awesome <laughs> I love these stories so let me uh, let me make you think a little bit so Snake played with many bands in the 1970s and 80s are there any notable gigs from that time that stand out in your mind and, and why oh uh, there's a lot uh, there's a lot I can't remember. Well, obviously ACDC was one of them. Uh, Motorhead was awesome. And uh, it, we were at the Penrith Panthers. And um, I was hanging to um, to listen to Motorhead. We, I think we must have had around 5,000 people in the venue we supported. Uh, I, you know, we got a great reaction. It was awesome. And uh, I couldn't wait. We had a panned table all all set out, ready to go, uh, reserved for us. And <laughs> I went and bought myself a beer and, and sat down to listen to Motorhead. And they started. And I watched my beer vibrate off the table and smash on the floor. <laughs> and it was like someone was screaming in your ear at, at like... You, know, you ever had that itching in your ear when it really, really... So it hurts when someone's screaming in it. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounded. It, it was just like it was too loud to for the normal person's hearing to to comprehend, and they emptied the joint, and I was so disappointed, you know. Um, but um, oh, I love Motorhead, you know. But I just thought the the crew that night just absolutely freaking crucified them, you know. Just a little bit softer in that venue uh, everyone would have had a ball but I sat there for a while and listened to it I thought they were great Was there an Australian metal or hard rock band from the early to mid 80s who you you thought should have made it but didn't? There's a band called Chariot that I used to see around a lot um, in the early 80s and I thought they were awesome um, and a, a drummer uh, called Loppy Morris. He was he was great. And they they got the chance to do uh, support with Rod Stewart. And I know in these days Rod Stewart doesn't sound very much, but in them days you look at it like thirty five thousand people at the cricket ground. Sure. And um, and what happened with them was it rained the year before. Um, uh, sorry, the week the week before. Mm. And Hush was supporting, so Rod Stewart couldn't come on. So the following week, um, it was postponed until the following week, and then 
you know, there were a few clouds up in the sky, and I think uh, Rod Stewart decided to, um, to play first. And so there's 35,000 people there. Yeah. And Rod Stewart played first. And, of course, everyone sort of walked out. And I think I remember seeing Loppy uh, grab a, um, a marshal head and throw it through his drums and walk off stage wow. halfway through their, their set. You know, it was terrible. But they were a great band, yeah. Now, previously, Akadaka performed as the house band for the season opening of Australia's Channel 9 NRL footy show from Sydney. That must have been great exposure, mate. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. We actually did three shows for them. We did um, uh, one in Sydney, which was uh, their opening, and then uh, we did the Suncorp Stadium one here uh, for their Queensland thing, and then we did the their grand final that was three years in a row uh grand final show at darling harbour it was great yeah i say it's very hard to um to do a live show like that it's it's, it's amazing it's a whole different ball game it's not just like jumping up on stage and playing you know you're, you're sort of like you're thinking to yourself christ this is all getting uh, filmed and and recorded and i'd better not fuck up you know so, so, so it's it's one take is it for those tv shows Ah, it's one take, all right, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so as well as touring throughout Australia, the band has previously played in the UK, Europe, Indonesia and New Zealand. And I note that you have more yep. dates booked right through 2017, correct? That's right, yes. Okay, let me ask you a couple of uh, random questions. Should ACDC continue on with Brian and without Cliff Williams? Well, oh, that's a hard one. Um, yeah, oh, look, yeah, I think if they could, they should, yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, Malcolm's not in the band either, is he, you know, anymore. So I don't know. I mean, that, that's a hard one. That's a hard one, you know. I mean, uh, ideally, I'd love to see the, the band, you know, back as the band with Malcolm and everyone on board. Not saying nothing against Stevie, but, you know, that, that was a band, wasn't it, you know. Um, I, I honestly think it would be great to see Angus you know, throwing away the school uniform and, and bouncing out into some other bands and, and, you know, making another mega band for himself. So sort of similar to what Bill Rudd's doing, really, you know? I mean, can you imagine it? It would be, so, would be awesome. So play, play select clubs in Europe with a, a, a young backing band behind him? I don't know they're young, but <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a band, yeah. If you can't see ACDC, go and see Akadaka now. That statement is not mine, but made by Angus Young. True? That's true. When did he see the band? He seen the band in Sydney, uh, I think it would have been four or five years ago now. It could be, could be longer. We've had that for a, for a while. But um, uh, he, he made the statement on um, 60 Minutes in Germany. Quite an honour, I imagine. Yeah, I uh, was um, unbelievable, actually. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Akadakarocks.com.au is the website for people to head to, which lists all the band's upcoming gigs, merchandise, some songs to listen to, and a whole stack more. Larry, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Keep in touch. No, you're more than welcome, mate. Thank See you. mate. Bye-bye. All the best. A request there for Larry Attard. That was, of course, the Angels, circa 1983 with Eat City, lifted from their Watch the Red album. So great to have Larry on this show and to look over some of his rock and roll history. Since the Australian rock show began, the song Let the Music Begin has been an integral part of this podcast. In the mid-80s, my brother and I dug Snake big time, so it was indeed very special to have Larry on the show. I do hope you all got something out of it. Akadakarocks.com.au That is the place you need to visit to learn more about Larry Attard, about Snake, and of course, about Australia's internationally acclaimed ACDC tribute show, Akadaka. The band have dates booked right through 2017, including some New Zealand dates in July, and I also note that some European dates are booked for later this year as well. That website address again is akadakarocks.com.au.
Okay, folks, it's time to run. Australian Rock Show at gmail.com. We're on Facebook. Like us, share us. You know the drill. You can also get us on the phone and leave us a message on the comment line, which is 047 845 0747. AustralianRockShow.com is our online home. All the past episodes are there for you to download or stream totally free. Hear us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Mixcloud. Once again, we really could use more iTunes reviews, so if you could take a few minutes out of your day to do so, it would mean a lot. AustralianRockShow.com is probably the best place to learn more about us, and indeed this podcast. Finally, we want to keep this podcast free, but there are running and production costs to get it all happening. The best way to show your support is by visiting our website at AustralianRockShow.com and simply clicking on the Donate button. All donations are welcome, and if you donate $5 or over, we'll play you a song of your choice. Let's close out with some snake. Rock and roll ain't no sin. Thank you once again for listening in, folks, and you all know the drill by now. If you're listening in whilst driving, turn the volume up and roll the window down so you can educate others. In its entirety, let's play the title track from Snake's 1986 album, Let the Music Begin. This is Dennis, out.